Hey everyone, it's been a while because I've been busy. A year and a half ago, I asked some of my friends to draw some custom stage layouts, and since then I've been working tirelessly on drawing and coding to bring these stages to life. Just ignore the fact that it takes like a week max to make one of these stages. I always wanted this to be a video, and I originally thought of recording this like another video, bringing together the crew to play doubles on these stages and see what happens. But uh, I just couldn't stop myself from doing this before all of them were done. They're just so fun, okay? <laughs> so to corral a group of new people to experience it and to see them in a new light, I created a tournament. Welcome to your custom nightmares a normal rivals tournament on the least legal stages. But instead of showing off all the stages right away, let's just hop into the tournament and I'll explain all of them as they come up. So first, let's take a look at the bracket. We have a lot of MLG regulars, as well as Wattmelon, another Krag, which isn't surprising because Krag is able to take control of any stage, making him a top tier character in this bracket. Other players to look out for are Zoomander and Quinny, who have planned these stages way more than the other competitors before the other people are able to, which just isn't fair. And just a random dude, who might be one of the only people I saw practicing for this tournament, even going as far to make this tier list, which... Crag? Down there? But he's definitely a threat in this bracket as he's won numerous meme brackets ranging from Ether Mode Abyss Endless, Hazards On, and Rivals 1.3.5, making him the favorite to win this according to Zoomander, my co-commentator. Let's see if that prediction pans out in this first match, Random Dude vs Hasty. And the first stage we're going to be talking about is PD's Playground. One of the last stages added, this is about the most neutral that a stage can be in this bracket, barring the insane side blast sounds. But other than that, the stage is very neutral and encourages good platform movement, so Random Dude unceremoniously takes his first game. Next up is, uh, decidedly not a neutral stage. Horrible Experiment has a bit of everything. Low ceilings, no space to move around, the stage doesn't extend all the way down, the blast zones are a bit too close. The only thing that this stage is really missing is a walk-off, which, don't worry, you'll definitely be seeing later. Top of them. Yeah, like, but it turned oh. out better. No! The oh. SD trying to go for that bash to get an early kill is just not going to be worth it on this stage where you have two inches of space to work with. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> this is it's just what are you supposed to do there? Gremlin got such a good combo starter, but the stage just says no combo ends here and now. <laughs> and in this game, the walls not extending all the way down was random dudes undoing, and this game goes to Hasty. And going to the least neutral neutral stage, random dude takes Hasty to Dungeon Cellar, the stage that has big blocky side platforms and a ceiling. So unless you want to get your opponent to 300% and pray they don't tech, you need a move that sends directly out, which is something that Ori definitely has. Playing Craig and they make the unfortunate mistake of going underneath. <laughs> oh, oh, <it's> <laughs> poor dying. Yeah, those bars, contrary to what I thought when I first played this stage, are not walls. Those yeah. are hanging platforms. Well, not platforms, but you get the idea. Some more batches here. Oh! Ooh, again. Yeah. The lack of walls is what makes those side plats so dangerous, especially for both of these characters, which really rely on those wall jumps to get back. It can be very hard. Yeah, if... been holding central stage now, just like the doctor ordered. Oh, that bash? That yeah, that bash kills. Kill? <laughs> yes, it is. Now, it's 2-1 random dude, and both of their counterpicks worked out. Hasty needs a good counterpick in story to keep him in this game, and he picked Terraria Boss Arena, a very unique stage to play on with its 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 platforms, all of which extending all the way to the side blast zones, and the highest one being dangerously close to the top one. If Hasty does a good enough job walling out Random Dude, he could still be in this. I think at this point, no one really likes the platforms, except for Ori, apparently! Oh my god! Oh my god, carried oh. off the top! <laughs> Raster in, in the chat, oh my god! I thought it wasn't even from Rivals. Gets to parry, and kills with F smash. I definitely would've just up smash there, I think, right? Like, that kills every day of the week. You're at the blast zone. Actually, Ori- yeah. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! My. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my god. What the? Random dude moves on with Hasty being knocked into the loser's bracket. Moving on to Rufon versus Nard now, and... Ugh, why did they have to gentleman to this stage? In this bracket, there are neutral stages for the first round, and then counterpicks, which open up on every other round. The climb is not a neutral stage. So Rufon and Nard both willingly decided to start their set 
by going to the climb. And we loved it. There's, the, there's not a lot of interaction, so let me... <laughs> Let me hide this screen really quickly as I go to speed this up. So, why do we hate the climb? Well, just look at it. The main reason is very obvious, having these little cubbies they can tech in infinitely, but what isn't obvious is the humongous blast zones. So even if you get knocked out of them, it's very likely that you'll still be able to come back. Which means that even if you aren't playing purely to win, the game will, at minimum, take like six minutes. So, it's fun to play, but when you're sitting here tasked with streaming this entire bracket, you could say we were less than stoked, is what I would and did end up saying the first time I recorded this, but I kind of forgot that in this first one, we were young and ignorant, so this one was actually a blast to commentate, but you'll definitely be seeing that energy going away as we keep commentating these games. Here we go, right. everybody. Here we go. both players just... Doing what is token of the climb, finding your hidey hole, and taking ownership of it. Pushing yes. your buttons fast, and the tech rinse repeat. Oh, oh, oh no. Scary for there for a second. <gasps> oh, no, that oh, actually, no. Oh, wait, does Rufon die here? Rufon actually Rufon dies. Rufon's so far away, she cannot recover in time. Just refusing to die, by the way, put it on a one-time speed if you believe Nari's request. Okay, if, hold on. I don't know if you do. I don't blame you for not. 500%. I'm seeing Rufon's higher percent. Oh, my her, God. And she finds it, drop-kicking Nard against the wall, Nard not getting that tech. Okay, so now there's the 45 minutes left. I don't understand when this gets hyped, because, like, you just don't <laughs> approach, right? Like... What is Nard even doing at this point, bro? You have a hundred and fifty percent lead. What is happening, dude? How did he get? I looked away. How did he get to a hundred and forty-seven? Who let this happen, <laughs> Nard? Anyways, yeah, Nard won, and somehow it was close. Next up, we're seeing gentlemen, and the first thing you may notice is that this is a bucket. With platforms to aid you with kills up top and to the sides, the strat is to get your opponent out of the bucket and then easily follow up with the kill. And as you'll see with Craig, it's surprisingly easy to do this with him. I didn't tech on this stage. Can I, can I just share oh. it? Oh my god. Uh, immediately Nard dying, dropping through the bottom platform. Letting you get inside or outside of the box, and then you can do a wall jump. <gasps> oh! That's oh. gonna kill right there. Just loving Craig here, like, because against Craig, you can't be in the bucket, because... They, they just pillar. Like, you, you just get That's immediately true. dragged yeah, out Nard right there. Force you out of the bucket. I don't know how Nard gets back here. This looks like a roof on game through and through. But we'll see. This is the stage. One accidental down tap, and it's Nard is so back. <laughs> I feel like Nard should also... Oh, the rock just goes through the wall. That's cool. <laughs> Screw this rock in particular. I see what she's going for now. She's trying to bounce rock off the wall. The... Yep. And this stage is beautiful. Both of them are at one win now, and Nard chooses the Pyramid, another neutral stage. Swapping onto the Claren, this isn't an entirely bad pick if you weren't fighting the Queen of Planking, Rufon. Planking has been popularized recently with Cheesy Potato, using it to beat Kusi's Raster at Heat Wave 6, but imagine if she didn't have to go back onto the stage to plank longer. So, uh, it's not looking great for Nard. Like, Rufon likes planking with Pillar, but what if Pillar never went down? What if she could, oh, I failed to plank, let me go to the other planking location. Oh, I failed at the other planking location, let me go to the third planking location. Nard is kind of successfully challenging it. I feel like the best way to stop someone from planking here is to jump past them and start planking them yourself. I agree, yeah, you can overshoot really easily. Terrified. You would say that, that's all I gotta say. Oh, and they just gonna casually tech Nair and then kill Nair with the forward air, that's fine. <laughs> he does have a stock down. Yeah, it does have the downer. Sour downer, actually a pretty almost, good angle here to disrupt. Yeah, almost killing off the fucking side with that, but Rufon, this is going to be her home turf. She takes the win. The ball's back in Nard's court, and he picks Funny Town, baby! Funny Town is funny. A little known fact about Funny Town, sex isn't allowed. It's so funny, they named a town after it. And I'm looking at the timer, and like, I... 
You know, <laughs> on this stage, actually, how? We might speed this up a little bit, but we're here on Funny what Town, baby. What are you baby. doing? Also, I just did not put music on this stage. That's so awesome. I love Funny Town. Why would you need music? You're too busy laughing because of how funny it is. Yeah, the soundtrack is you laughing. Why? There's high ground. Why are you going to the opposite side of the stage, please? What is this? <laughs> This is not very funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying on Funny Town. You're gonna trying here. to get on top of the helicopter. Yeah, you're trying. Classic rookie move trying to get on top of the helicopter. Oh my lord. I swear to God, Nard. <laughs> Alright, everybody, give me a second, really quick. We're going on our good pal two times speed here. <laughs> oh my god. Please. <laughs> Okay, we gotta go. Got right, walk off hill. Okay, okay, okay. Until okay, this okay. batch is done, I'm gonna be waterfalling this margarita. Alright. Oh. Somehow the colors in Funny Town seem a little more dull after that match. Rufon will be advancing, and Nar is getting sent down to the loser's bracket, which is where we're going to next. Thankfully for my lungs, this next set is mostly stages we've seen before. The first game in Dungeon Cellar goes pretty normal aside from some scary angles that Forsburn can hit, getting Sathix up 1-0. to zero. The next game on the Pyramid isn't nearly as close, with Zoomander completely changing the way I see this stage. And now, 1-1. One to one. Is this stage even worth explaining? Made by Sethix himself, this stage speaks for itself, and it doesn't speak for long. I genuinely haven't seen a game on this stage go past a minute, so the objective on this stage is very simple. Don't die. And, as Sylvanos going against Forsburn, that's surprisingly difficult. With Zoomander's potentially last pick in this tournament, he goes to Funny Town. And, yeah, maybe the stage just is flawed. Another Funny Town fact. Quinny is the Funny Town villain and is not allowed within town limits. After Seth and Zoomander got bored of camping, Zoomander lost, knocking him out of the bracket and back into the commentary couch. Next match is Quinny vs. Watmelon, starting on a new stage, IDK. And, uh... It's a stage... I couldn't tell you. Oh, no! God. What?! <laughs> no! Push down there. We're seeing Quinny here. Quinny needs to press down, so we'll see if we see any... Oh my god! The immediate <laughs> revenge kill. This stage is called IDK because the friend I got it from, Landaby, just didn't know what to call it. And it just really goes through and everything. Like, I don't know what this plat layout is. I don't know what this aesthetic is. But it's a stage and it exists. So It's or... on the list and you can pick it. It's a starter stage, in fact. I don't think anyone, like, voluntarily goes to IDK. It's just, like, if you don't want to see your opponent on any other stage. <laughs> Great roof on the house mm. there by Watmelon. There's uh, pretty good opportunity for roof ons here, but that's probably death, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Next match, Watmelon takes Quinny to the climb, which was a surprisingly short game for the climb. Some robberies on both sides led to Quinny up a stock, and an SD ended the game with over three minutes left. So do you see why we don't like commentating this stage? On any other stage, that match would have been two minutes long. And now, Quinny on match point, Watmelon shows Forest Floor, but the cameraman was drunk, which we don't have footage of. Quinny played a bit too good, and Watmelon all at four, destroying the replay. But thankfully, Funny Town Mayor Gurfo Rama has provided an artistic rendition of what happened. It really just jumps off the page. Watt gets knocked out of the tournament as Quinny advances, while we check back on the winner's bracket, Rufon vs. Random Dude. In Game 1, we get three exciting SDs, and Game 2 has Random Dude abusing Bash to clean up this game, making Ori really look top 1 in this bracket. Game 3 was a lot more interesting, with some insane plays in the box, but, like Game 1, the SDs really decided this game, allowing Rufon to easily win it. And now, in Game 4, surprisingly not a Rufon pick, we're going to the climb, and listen. Sitting at home, you might still be thinking that the climb isn't really that bad if you're playing aggressively, and... Dude, Rufon almost lived that, that's crazy. It's... <laughs> two Ori on an Ori! <laughs> <laughs> Will we get 300? <laughs> Not inside. Oh, that is dead. Oh, that snipe with orb was insane, actually. Three minutes on the clock, three stocks to go. <laughs> this stage is 
Oh my god. No, no, <laughs> Renamu comes back. Renamu comes back. You don't even have to go for the thing. You just can just fly back as Ori. Oh my gosh. Dude, what is happening? How is Rufon even alive? So okay, oh there it is. God. Thank God. Six minutes. <laughs> Anyways, that's a 3-1 for Random Dude. Put him in Grand Finals and sends Rufon all the way down to Losers Finals. Next up, we're going to Sethix versus Hasty, starting on a new stage. Moving minecarts is like Ethereal Gates, but messed up. It seems like it'd be really scary to be on the platforms when they're extended outwards, but uh... I'm not really good at making blast zones, so it really isn't that bad, because the blast zones are just massive. So these platforms just end up being decent camping spots. And aside from some funny, this didn't kill moments, a pretty normal match decided Seth to be the winner. Another Seth win in the next game, proving that Hasty's favorite counterpick might not actually be in his favor. And then, Hasty did the absolutely unthinkable. Picking Forest Floor, but the cameraman was drunk. Now... Why was this unthinkable? Well, as we learned from this amazing drawing from the Funny Town Mayor, beautiful. This stage has walk-offs surrounding a large pit in the middle, so if you have a good recovery, you can run away with any lead, forcing your opponent to approach you and get edgeguarded if they don't have a good recovery. Hey look, I put Four's Burning Claren's graphic. So yeah, let's just see how this plays out. Okay, so Claren obviously doesn't want to approach. <laughs> I turn it to 4x. <laughs> turn it to 4x. Wait, oh, movement, 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 movement. Oh, something's happening. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. oh Jesus oh. Christ. Oh, uh, how's, how's everyone's days been, uh, been going? Oh, he's going, no he's done. Uh, that's plumb. No, yeah. One immediately as, dude, oh, no. immediately as Hasty said it's it was gonna start. Oh, he's back. He he wants to play the game, and he does catch Seth off guard. I win purely because Hasty was the first player to decide to play. <laughs> yeah. No! no! You're no! evil! You're an evil person! No! <laughs> Yo, Dude, I'm cheering for Hasty all the way. This is Hasty. I, I want Hasty with the soap and no! Oh, no! we put it 60! Dude, he has to get all of his resources, dude. Dude, it's so sad. <laughs> why? Just why did you allow this? Also, yeah, Hasty picked the stage! This was Hasty's pick, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh? Okay. Oh my god, oh, god that's he's crazy. Actually so clean. <laughs> Let's go. It's like, what do you even do in this situation? <gasps> oh, waiting for oh, the parry? <gasps> wait! No way. Wait, wait, what was that in the top left? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. Just shut. <laughs> shut, just... don't look at that. Oh, let's go. Oh, oh wait, it's right. actually it's one to one. That's crazy. So, <laughs> so one to one, the amount of uphill Hasty has to do to make anything happen <sighs> is is actually insane. I mean, one good interaction at the edge and uh... no, <laughs> Hasty, <laughs> you won the camera. Dude, I was, was cheering for you, man. Ugh, devastatingly close. In the second non three one of the night, Hasty is out. Seth claiming the 3-0 and moving farther in losers. Now the next set, Quinny versus Nard, they also start with a gentleman. But instead of taking 8 minutes, they're looking to play for 1. And, well, they did better than I thought, living for over a minute and 30 seconds. And in the next game, I shouldn't have said anything. This climb game is notable because the second stock of the two that were taken that game was taken nearly seven minutes in. But piling the arcane, Nard manages to win the timeout with slightly less percent built up on it. So for Quinny's counterpick, he goes to Gentleman. And there's a lot of jank on this stage that I haven't talked about yet. There's this, there's this, but most importantly to the set, there's this. Quinny only got it once this game, but it was early enough to correct for an SD when he was trying to gain charge in the bucket using charge up B to seal out the last two stocks. And now we're heading over to hidey holes, which, yeah, we we're kind of asking to have a long night with this one. But it's one saving grace is that this camera does not lie. If you walk off the screen, you are already in the blast zone. So at least you aren't holding your breath to see if someone manages to recover. Also, before we go into the gameplay, notice the stages that Zoomander has made so far. I'm starting to think that my own worst enemy is commentating with me. 
Oh yeah, and also Bucket joined during the Rufon v. Random Dude set. Everyone say hi, Bucket, in the comments. Anyways. This is... I love this stage. It is, it's your stage, so you love it so much. You can't act like this isn't one of the better stages. Oh I'm my like, god! They're not gonna, they literally aren't gonna die is the thing. No, it is literally wobbling him. Purples. <laughs> five hundo. When you got like 500 on the freaking climb stage, I thought that's as high as it went. Oh my god. Will we get eight? He if he gets seven. a 999, then he's the go. If not, he's a fraud. When he is officially bad at the game, he gets oh. like eight, nine, nine. Oh, oh my god, this was so purple! Special. Purple's <laughs> <though> last. <gasps> Can we see 999? Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh, we moved hiding no, he died as a fraud! Oh, he's a fraud! Oh, it's the wall? It's the other wall? Down. No! Tell off the Doesn't other side. Of them. Yeah. What do you even do here in Nara's position? Like, what, what is the winning play? You just have to hope Quinny misses attack. You just and he misses a bad it. tech at that. <laughs> I love the tea bags and two times speed. That's that was so a fun, on, right? awesome game. Yeah, that was the that last was a game match that was played by players. Yeah, that's gonna be Nard out of the bracket with Quinny advancing. So hopefully we won't be seeing any more gentlemen in this bracket. Next up, we're moving to Loser Semis, Sethix versus Quenny. And starting on Pyramid, me and Zoomander saw the 2 minute game timer on the left, and Bucket saw the 8 minute rule set timer, so the couch was a bit split. Now, do I have to look at the time? Oh, oh god! Oh god! Uh oh. <laughs> I was expecting to see something different, but I think this is. <laughs> Let's just say you guys aren't gonna be listening to Coconut Mall. What the strategy is? You know what? I'm gonna waterfall this margarita until Quinny takes a stock. Dude, how on this stage? I just don't get it. Th look at the timer like and no one has gotten hit in like seven, like almost a minute now. Like, if you show me the start of this, this is the game that is six minutes. Wait, that was no Seth? Way. I thought, no way that's fun. Seth, you tech this. You tech this? One more. One more, One more for the fans, come on baby, come on. Set the retreat to the opposite side of the stage, oh my god! <laughs> oh wait, no, you're the... scary, no! Oh, oh, first dog. I almost emptied my goddamn cup. Oh my god. First dog, how the fuck is this match having this timer and we didn't see them, either of them, want to play the game in the slightest for the first minute and a half? They still don't even really want to play the game. So, so they're just like, just okay, I understand. Broke. No way. Okay, I was gonna say, you better attack that. No, you better attack oh. that. Oh, you can't attack that! How, oh, how no! This game a timeout? Oh, what? You misunderstand. You might have been looking at the wrong timer. This was not a timeout. Yeah. It oh. was two minutes long. Quinny takes the first game, finding yet another upstrong cheese spot, and I hope you enjoy that foreshadowing when Nard got knocked out of the bracket. I got to see it. Uh. Um. Is this right, guys? Did uh, no. Uh, so, did you guys- Why did a timeout? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> He's a- What? He's okay, let's go! Right. What? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Beat the shit up. I'm not watching a timeout on fucking Jules, man. Oh, I have my things I want to do with my day, my life, and my night. We're and going for x speed, bro. Why did you let this happen? Oh, there's <laughs> no way they gentlemen to Jules Vale and time each other out. Like, it's of all the vanilla stages to time out on, like, this is, like, one of the <laughs> yeah, hardest. Yeah, Jules Vale, like... <laughs> yeah, like, Rock Wall is easier to time out on than this stage. When he's not even, like, pretending to try and take this dock, he just wants to do his rain cloud impression. Okay, that's a death. Alright. Wh Quinny is within reason to win this, but we know we're not gonna see a kill screen here. Dude, I still remember like two weeks ago when Quinny was like, you know, I really want to change up my play style. Like, I don't want to air camp anymore. And then, uh, Quinny and then we get trying this. to improve his aggression gameplay. Look at all the projectiles he's trucking out, though. And the thing is, I heard Quinny, I was in call with him when he was playing for us this, and he said he doesn't play aggressive unless it's bracket. That's <laughs> really funny. Insane. And Seth is going Which to win. Oh Last my. One, I guess. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Next game, Quinny won in his preferred counter pick, Gentlemen. 
because of the upstrong cheese, and Sethix brings back moving minecarts to try and beat Quinny, but just barely loses out in the end of a nail-biter of a last stock. Now in Losers Finals, we see Rufon versus Quinny, and I wish that I could just show gameplay and say that pitting two campy players against each other makes for extremely long games. But surprisingly, it was a really normal first game on PD's Playground. I, at one My point energy the game, plus uh, the alcohol plus just what everything about this bracket and its players are are testing me. I feel bad, dude. I just oh my god! Then when we moved to Quinny's counter pick, it also went really smoothly. Well, as smooth as a game on gentlemen can go. Yeah, just one misslip of the thumb and you're just fucked. <laughs> Snapback, that's hilarious. Man, I'd hate playing on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine snapbacking to SD. It is Tempest. Oh, that could have actually been it. Oh, oh no. Yeah, that's, yeah, it. that's oh. it. And an actual fast game on Forest 4, but the cameraman was drunk? I just... They're actually playing the stages like I intended? Fighting Hoda on this stage is like a sleeper thing, because you don't realize how bad it's going to be. Okay, percent has been put on. All right, we're putting up the wall oh, and we're it's... hiding. Actually, just putting up the wall and hiding. That's <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, he's forced to approach now. You guys remember the timer on this game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what happens. <laughs> it's, it's a fun little game of like, if the game's like a timeout or like super duper short, you just gotta wonder what. Also, oh, I think God. I found out what. I think I found out. What. There's not a ceiling, but the blast zone is pretty low. Oh no! No! I see why the timer was so low. Looking at the timer, I know nothing good is going to happen right now. Oh no, my god! That's all bad. Oh my god. Well, they can't all be winners. Is this an epilepsy warning now? Dude, I'm, I'm gonna open Twitter. <laughs> I don't want to watch this shit anymore. <laughs> the rock is there too to catch it for when to get that's, out too. That's so stupid. Guys, guys. 8% means we're he fine. doesn't need to approach. Oh, oh my, my god. god. And, <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, a jump yeah. scare. Dude, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't think it's going to end with the death. Oh, like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, got him out. Oh. And, no. <laughs> oh, no. Even if that did kill, though, the percent would have given Quinny the win there. Yeah, Quinny would still be up by, like, 800%. So, at the end of this surprisingly fast set, Quinny pulls ahead 3-1 to one and heads into Grand Finals with Random Dude. And this is the showdown of a lifetime. The Camping Menace, with practice on these stages purely based on nepotism. Versus the hero, the champion, the rushdown king, the man with the- I'm having a really difficult time remaining impartial after everything that Quinny's done to me in this bracket. But we're in for a treat here, starting with Mighty Minecarts, and we're seeing the Eliana from Random Dude for the first time in this bracket. But more importantly, Meekle is here! I asked Meekle to commentate this bracket at the start, but when he unexpectedly got busy, Zoomander stepped in and saved it at the last minute, and commentated with me instead. But now, the gang's all here at the end. And looking back at the game, Quinny's kind of owning right now. Random Dude manages to take a stock, but Quinny ends up sealing out the game with two stocks remaining. Quinny's looking dominant here, but for some reason he didn't ban Alpha Bounce against Aliana, so he's not breaking that minute record again. One to one, and Quinny chooses to go to Forest Floor, BTC, MYD. And it really could have gone either way. With both Eliana and Hodon having good pressure on walk-offs and edge guards, but even with Random Dude's best attempts, Quinny managed to get the upper hand and his lead just snowballed from there. And now, in Grand Finals with Quinny on the verge of a reset, we're seeing a new stage. Welcome to Drone Factory. With fast moving platforms on one side and less frequent platforms on the other, this stage really does just play like FD until you try and continue combos off the side or edge guard. And I don't know why we haven't seen Random Dude just pick Ellie in this stage as a counter pick before, because he was absolutely cooking. Immediately, he found out that if you put a mine on the fast plats, it kept falling down with an active hitbox, sticking to the opponent if they got too close, which helps seal out the first stock. He also uses the moving platforms to give him free remix, and it's just, it's beautiful. 
Quinny also fell to the mind tech on the last stock, leading us to game five of this grand finals. And if you've been paying attention so far, Quinny still has an ace up his sleeve. Going to gentlemen, Quinny's looking to force the reset. The first stock was taken by classic upstrong cheese, but was quickly answered by a swift kill from random dude. Then, Quinny abandons it to chase random dude offstage with foreigners, which he's successful with until... Oh my god, that killed so early. Quinny's counterpick- Oh, oh my, my god! Oh my god! <laughs> now, last stock on both of them. With Quinny having access to an instant kill move, random dude has to play the best custom stages of his life. Just one up <laughs> <laughs> it is it's really really one really up just one up trunk. Gremlin got hit by it once, so he's gotta know. He has to play careful he here. But nearly a, like 100% ahead right now. Just can't, just can't. And now he holds the win. There. Yep, and now just he holds the win. Sit there, oh, he's in the box. The win is in his grasp right now. <gasps> <gasps> oh, no, it doesn't kill. Oh, that's so huge. Wait. But the up oh. air. And random dude wins. With some excellent adaptations, holding his position in the bucket supported by Steam, he clutches up and brings it home, not dropping a single set. And even though there wasn't a prize pool, I ended up giving Random Dude the Street Wave Olympia because of how grateful I was to see good, thoughtful gameplay prevail over all the evil campers that wanted to ruin my bedtime. So, to all the players that competed, and people who are watching, either on the original stream or this video, thank you for supporting this really dumb project that I could have finished in two months if I had, like, any semblance of a good work schedule. And uh, I can't believe I'm actually gonna do a call to action in one of these videos. I hope I do adage proud. First off, if you're watching the video as it just came out, we're hosting this bracket again in MLG. Same stages, same rules, with a doubles version coming soon. And if you want to see more videos of this, check out the hour-long stream highlights that I made of this top 8. Commentary with Zoomander, Bucket, and Meech is not something you want to miss, and it's very different from this video, so, you know, I recommend it. Which, thinking about it, it'd be weird if I didn't, but yeah, go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I put a ton of work into this video, and I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. I hope to put out another video soon for y'all, but until then, I'll catch you later.